In this video, you're going to learn the top 10 things to do before storing a sailboat in the tropics. My name is Linus Wilson. Here at the Slow Boat Sailing YouTube channel, we cover the news and tips that matter to cruising sailors. We've been uh, sailing around the world part-time, as featured in my book, How to Sail Around the World Part-Time, uh, for the last four to five years. And we've stored our boat in the tropics in five different dry storage facilities. Uh, we stored it in Ecuador. We stored it in Hiva O in the Marquesas, Tahiti, and uh, Vava Utonga. And now, most recently, in New Caledonia, Nomia. And uh, I've learned a few things since I started uh, dry storing the boat. Uh, but we'll start out with some really basic tips uh, of our top 10 tips. Number one, take down all the sails. So the most important thing is to take off the Genoa sail. Uh, the furling Genoa needs to be taken off. Uh, anybody that spent any time at a marina should know this, uh, but it seems like a lot of owners learn this lesson the hard way that the Genoa sail will rip even in mild weather that is gale force conditions not storm conditions not hurricane conditions and uh, you'll have a ripped Genoa which will be hard to take down if you do not take it up furling it is not sufficient for long-term dry storage and when I talk about long-term dry storage I mean a couple months or more uh, we've stored our boat uh, between four to eight months four to nine months and uh, my preference is uh, to at least visit the boat once every five months. Uh, but in that amount of time, you can't afford to have the Genoa up. It's also advisable to take down the mainsail. So take down the mainsail, um, mostly because uh, if you fold up the mainsail, it'll keep a better shape and it'll be uh, less worn out at, than if you keep it on with the sail cover on and then tie it down with a rope which is what some people do I think you can get away with that uh, in most instances and uh, you might even get away with that in hurricane conditions who knows but I think it's better for the mainsail if you take it all the way off the boom uh, I don't think you have to drop the boom some people would like to drop the boom that's that's individual preference uh, but as long as the boom is tied down in several places uh, then I, I don't think that's necessary. Um, second tip is to turn off and unplug all electronics. So unplug everything out of 12 volt outlets. Anything that doesn't have a switch, it should be disconnected. Um, I'll tell you, you know, we have a lot of switches, uh, but uh, there's a, we cover up the, we have a VHF on the binnacle and the VHF on the binnacle accidentally turned on. Uh, while I was covering it and that drained our batteries uh, when we were in Ecuador we had to replace all our AGM batteries with uh, flooded lead acid batteries in Ecuador uh, so from now on I, I just take out the I take out the fuse for that thing that I'm worried that's going to switch on uh, but definitely don't leave anything in the 12 volt sockets right which probably don't have switches for them uh, but if you you know some people feel like they should take off uh, all the wires off the battery terminals that's possible that's something you may consider doing it depends on how complicated your wiring system is I prefer not to I think that would create more problems than not but the other thing is that you want to turn off the bilge pump which is controversial but uh, turning off the bilge pump uh, is a good idea if you don't want to drain your batteries because the bilge pump does have a float switch float switch does tend to get jammed and uh, if it ever gets jammed, then your battery is dead, right? Because it, in the month or two months or five months or six months that uh, since it starts uh, in it, its up position, uh, then the battery is going to be dead and you're not going to have any bilge pump anyway. So I think it's better to just let the bilge pump uh, turn off and either have a monitoring service or, or come and visit it. Um, every five months would be what I would say. Uh, the other thing is you want to turn all cushions on their sides. You don't want your cushions to get wet and moldy and stuff like that. You want them to be in a position where they can drain easily and they're not going to, if they're pool, if there's pooled water for some reason that we can't anticipate, 
uh, that they're not they're going to be nice and dry. And we've never had problems with our cushions. And uh, we've done that not just uh, when we were laying up the boat for five months, but also when we were laying up the boat for like three weeks in New Orleans because we live uh, our home port's New Orleans, but we lived about a hundred or more miles away from New Orleans, our home port. Um, the but the boat is currently in New Caledonia, about a third of the way around the world. So uh, you should remove all food. A any food that is not in a sealed container should be removed. Uh, I've. You should also be careful about canned goods. Make sure that the canned goods are not going to expire over the period or that the cans are close to expiring. Uh, so if they're going to expire over the period, there's a good chance the cans will fail and they'll explode. We had some exploding uh, chili. Uh, it was pretty good chili, but it really stunk of the boat. Uh, there were... Um, there were uh, maggots in the chili and we had to clean that out in the marquesas it was it was terrible um it took me several days to figure out where the chili spills were <laughs> uh uh we also had like uh we had some flour that i just put in a bag uh but the flour i think had weevils to begin with we bought it in ecuador and the weevils went through like you know four generations on the boat while the boat was in marquesas and um in the nine months or actually it was like five months uh it was in the marquesas and so the all the weevils were dead because they'd all you know they'd gone through five generations they didn't get to the sixth uh but they they were everywhere uh it was just a mess uh but i have you know uh i do keep canned goods in there uh as long as they're not close to ex expiration um and i i and that's been okay and uh i've also kept pasta that's not been opened that's in a, a hefty slider bag uh and that that has an extra layer of a hefty slider bag and that's worked for me um the fifth tip i'd give you is to remove all uh jerry can fuel uh and drain all gas and carburetors that, that should be obvious for somebody that's spent any time with gasoline electronics uh so uh, you don't you don't want stale gas in your jerry cans you don't want stale gas in your gas so um you should be thinking about that towards the end of your season towards the layup period that you want to burn all your diesel and uh you'd be prepared to burn all your gas it's uh, of course easier to burn your gas because you could put it in a rental car or something like that uh, but it's a little bit harder to burn the diesel. So don't don't go overboard on diesel as you're going in or you're going to have to give it to somebody at the marina. Um, the uh, other thing is you number six is closely related is to fill the tanks full. So fill your diesel tank full. So you don't want any air in your main tank for your main inboard engine for your sailboat. Uh, because the more air you have, the more moisture you're going to get in the fuel, the more water you're going to get in your fuel, the more problems you're going to have when you uh, recommission the boat uh, at the next season. Uh, you know, seven, kind of obvious, close off all propane. Uh, so you don't want the propane lines open. Close them off. Uh, and uh, number eight, you want to place uh, dry bags all over the boat. So I got these dry bags these are uh i think they're calcium chloride is the active ingredient they're kind of like the the little bags that you get in electronics except they're really big you can buy them i think a pack of four was ten dollars something like that on amazon um and these have hangers on them there's other types that uh will turn into gel this type will like It'll collect the water you could buy the i think the calcium chloride in bulk and and you wouldn't have all the packaging and stuff and save some money on that uh but you know if you have one of your crew bring that in or bring that in every season and open those bags up uh right before you recommission it'll keep your boat a lot drier so in tahiti we left the boat for nine months and uh we didn't have any of these dry bags we didn't start doing the dry bags until uh, Tonga. Tonga was quite wet. Um, Tahiti was quite wet. Marquesas was quite wet. 
uh, and in Marquesas, Tahiti, the boat was so humid. This was detrimental to the electronics. In Tahiti, we had all kinds of problems. The alternator was ruined because of the, uh, the water, and a lot of other electronics were ruined because of that. So uh, you, you, you want to bring the humidity down in your boat, so you're going to need something to suck it out. Um, uh, an electric dehumidifier is not a really good option because uh, people unplug my electronics, my, my AC electrical cords all the time. I would never rely on an AC electrical cord for any amount of time. Um, we always unplugged all our cords, even when we were leaving the boat for just two weeks in New Orleans, and uh, we've been happy doing that. Uh, so I would rely on things that do not have electronic backups. So do not rely on the uh, the uh, bilge pump. Don't rely on on uh, electronic uh, dehumidifier. Uh, the chemical solution is much better. Okay, uh, nine. You want to clear all drains, so you don't want to eat standing water in the drains. Uh, and and then ten. And you can see me doing that in the background. I'm defrosting the fridge. We're getting ready to. Uh, laid up for another five months here in uh, New Caledonia. And uh, we're going to continue our round the world voyage. We have uh, about two seasons up of the four seasons that we've actually filmed uh, in, in our vlog. Check those out and check out some of our videos here at Slow Boat Sailing Channel. And subscribe. Happy sailing. Have some fun on the water. I'm Linus Wilson. Bye-bye. Okay, so if you're still around, here's some bonus tips. Uh, one of the things you want to worry about is UV radiation, right? Um, obviously, you're taking down the bimini in addition to the sails, but you also want to worry about uh, UV radiation on your dinghy. So you want to make sure that's well covered and tied down and tied down so the cover doesn't blow off. And, you know, I like to have two covers on, on my uh, PVC dinghy. The, and then I like to put my jerry cans, my fuel canisters underneath the dinghy so they don't get UV regulate, uh, radiation while I'm gone. So those are two extra tips that will keep your gear in good working order for many seasons in the tropics while you dry store your boat. Bye-bye. Have some fun on the water. Subscribe. I'm Linus Wilson.